What's going on? And welcome to what we hope is your favorite. It's Idaho Sports Talk, Prater in the Ball Game, KTIK Sports Radio, the ticket. And Prater, I misspoke when we last went to break. Let me say it correctly. For the first time in Idaho Sports Talk history, we will interview an active quarterback on the Boise State roster in studio. C.J. Tiller joins us on the row in the row paint studio, Boise State quarterback. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it, C.J. Tiller? Yeah. You're making history, Tiller. <laughs> Welcome there to the go. show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. You like this? Like the setup here? The setup's deep. awesome, pretty and I'm neat. the first, so I can I can take that. That's awesome. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about this stuff, C.J. And I just wanted to start. Like, I don't think you would still be here if you didn't think you were gonna get a fair shot to win this starting job and you started the last game for Boise State and start the next game for Boise State. Were you assured that by this coaching staff? Was that part of it at all when everything went on after the season about you having that decision and choosing to stay here? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing is that when I first committed here was uh, the the loyalty. Um, I said that when I when I first committed. And I, I know I was on an interview too. Um, that's just how my dad raised me. And I, I'm a loyal person, um, but at the same time, uh, I would also want a fair shot too, um, at, uh, having the starting job. So uh, yeah, there was there was some talks about it, but at the same time, um, I love Boise, and um, this is probably where I want to live after football and after my careers are done because this this town, this city, this place is is just amazing. You can't beat this environment and, and the game day environments and, and just going out to the mountains environment, like all like that. This. You're down with that stuff? You like doing that stuff, going out to the mountains and that? Oh, yeah. I like doing that. I take long drives in my car, and I'll just go to the mountains, listen to country or listen to whatever I'm listening to, and then just jam out, look at the view, also look at the nice houses around me. But Did, um, did you hear that ball game? Mountains and country music. Yeah, I like <laughs> this guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to get favorite music. We're but... trying to get Johnny to like more country music around here. But uh, <laughs> look at you, were, you were the first to commit last year. I mean, like in uh, Two years March, ago, right? Or... Two years 22. Wow, that's crazy. March yeah. of 20. You were the first person to commit in your entire, entire class, probably because of a lot of things you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was the first one. Uh, Coach Avalos sealed the deal. So, <laughs> CJ Tiller in studio. Terrific. Can't wait to get this conversation going. Just assess how you've been in the spring. Now, Mad Dog's rehab has given you and Malachi and Colt Fulton a lot more reps in the, in the, in the, in the lives. And, you know, we're there at practice most days, CJ. How are you evaluating yourself so yeah. far? Uh, if I could evaluate myself, I think I'm I'm taking the the right steps and going in the right way uh, right now. You know, with Maddox going down, um, obviously that you know it sucks and it's a bummer for for him to go through the things that he went through. And I, mean, I wish that upon nobody. Uh, but I know he's going back in the rehab uh, rehab process and all that, and he's doing great. Um, so I have to take advantage of the reps that I'm getting. Um, and as of right now, I'm I'm taking advantage of those and I'm learning. You know, it, if you really look at it, uh, last. Last year when I got here in the springtime, uh, I didn't. I got a little bit of orange reps, which is the number two reps. Um, and then me and Maddox were splitting it, you know, and he might have started pulling away a little bit uh, towards the spring ball and fall camp, and that just lessened my reps. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I never really got a, a lot of reps uh, last year. Not saying I didn't get any, but I got a lot, but I didn't get as many as, you know, I wanted. So this is really the first time I'm able to really get a lot of reps and, and go in there and, and actually get with a lot of guys. Um, so, you know, I, I had to take that in and, and, and really take advantage of what I'm getting right now because when fall camp gets around, um, who knows where we're going to be at, um, but at the same time, I'm going to compete and, and give it all I got. He's C.J. Tiller, Boise State quarterback, and we're talking about spring ball and all kinds of things. We're getting to know him. We had a chance to talk to you last week for the first time, or at least I did, so I, I thought it was really cool. I'm going to pluck two things out of what you said in last week's press conference and have you expand on that. We don't want to go back too far. Uh, we want to kind of focus on now, but you said you were very upset with the way you played in that UCLA bowl game. How do you define very upset for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's not I, when I said that I'm not referring to how I, I knew the game plan like the back of my hand, like I said in, in an interview. Um, so that, that wasn't anything I was upset about. Um, I knew everything what we were going to do, uh, what that defense was going to run. Um, I know that UCLA, to my memory, that they lost their defensive coordinator a week before. So we didn't know who was calling. Besides the point, um, you go in the game, you don't you don't know really what to expect with their defense, you know. Then when we kind of got the gist of what they're running, um, I didn't really take advantage of some routes that we had open. Um, you know, I kind of played the safe game. I kept hitting my check downs. And, and, and it, honestly, it's it's what Bush told me before the game. It's the Tony Romo thought. Tony Romo said, 
you know, when he first started playing football, he always wanted to throw the deep balls because that's the prettiest ones you can throw. Everybody likes watching deep balls. Oh, so yeah. I, I know them. you guys love them, but I love them, CJ. at the same time, that's not always going to guarantee you to move the sticks. So uh, I, I wanted to move the sticks. I wanted to give the ball to our athletes and just let them be the athletes. Like, you know, give the ball to Prince and give the ball, uh, obviously, to Ashton Jensi um, and let him work. And, and, and that's what I try to do. Um, I, I was I wasn't gonna, I'm not going to say I was scared to throw the ball deep um, uh, or shorter, I guess you could say. Uh, but I was just taking the Tony Romo thought, um, you know, and I wish we called a, a little more uh, shot plays, but that's fine. Uh, Coach Coach Bush didn't really uh, feel like he had to call a deeper game than than what we had planned up. But, you know, it's happened. I wish we had the, the shot to go deeper sometimes and, and get them in their cover two look. I, I, I remember their defense like the back of my hand right now because <laughs> I wish I could just take it back. But that cover two defense and send some pressure one, uh, cover one, I, I wish uh, we could have took advantage of it. But it happens. OK, it does happen. Now, the other thing that you said in this press conference, again, and you were very good at it, you just told us before we went on the air that you've actually been practicing and working on press conferences, interviews all the way back <laughs> to like junior high with your dad, yeah. who was a, you know, a high power businessman who wanted you to, to get out there and talk about your Crohn's disease, which you've been very public about and your football career. You said last the other day, quote unquote, <laughs> I have a very unique style of play. Mm. Let's talk about that. Yeah, um, I think uh, first when you look at my my form and the way I throw, it's it's very different. You know, I'm not an over the top guy. They try to make me an over top. What I mean by that is getting my arm up over my, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. getting it up high. You know, I'm not. I'm not that type of guy. I have a lower arm slot, but um, God gifted me. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> God, <laughs> God gifted me with a uh, with a very talented arm, um, and uh, just the way it came out is different. But also the way I play. You know, the way the way I move in the pocket when it, when I get out the pocket the you know, just the way I do things and the way I move is a lot different than a lot of guys. And I'm not saying I'm Taylor Green when I escape the pocket by all means. Don't <laughs> at me, Boise fans. But, <laughs> and they will. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I can extend plays and I can make plays on my feet if I have to. And then if I got to get in those tough, gritty situations, I will. Um, so at the same time, uh, I think I'm very different. I don't think that there's someone like me. It's one of one. God, God made me different. C.J. Tiller, Boise State quarterback, right in the mix, wants to be the starter, giving it everything he has every spring. Can't wait till this competition heats up in fall camp. C.J., and, and, and you'll know this as you get older, I'm certain, because it feels like you're a very apt pupil. But, what, you like? You, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, getting, you're getting a dirt cutter education in quarterbacking. Every single day. Like, what's that matriculation like? So uh, I, I was hoping I remembered to tell you guys this. My high school coach uh, Williamsfoot, in Williamsfoot oh. uh, at ASU. So I called wow. him. I was actually – it's Coach Campbell, Steve Campbell. Um, and he played quarterback 6'10". I don't know how he's that tall playing quarterback. <laughs> I don't have a question. But that's not me. So I hope he's not listening to this. But uh, <laughs> he uh, he talked to me and just said, uh, you know, you're, you're under a very wise man. You know, I never knew Cutter like that. I knew who Cutter was, but I never got to be able to be coached by him. So I didn't know what – how he was going to, what he was going to bring the table for me, I guess you could say. Um, but you know, my, my coach talked to me and just told me, you listen to everything he says, just listen to everything he says. If you don't like it, li like it. So, uh, Cutter is just an awesome guy. You can't, you can't, you can't not like him. He's, he's just super chill, relaxed guy and, and super fun to be around. Quarterback room. Here comes the big star in Malachi Nelson. Maddox Madsen is, is kind of the incumbent with the knee injury. You played in the bowl game. You're getting a lot of reps in the spring. Everybody thinks that it's either going to be Malachi or Maddox in, in the fall, except for maybe you. And you're not afraid of competition based on what you said today. You embrace competition, and you like that chip on the shoulder guy. I think you said something along the line, I've never really gotten attention. I don't really want attention. And I think you called yourself a silent killer, just going to work and taking care of business. You're not afraid of competition, are you, dude? No, not at all. I, I, that's just my whole life has been a competition uh, to get offers, to get – where I go, like, it's just been a competition. I look at it. Fighting Crohn's has been a competition for me. Um, you know, with, you know, just family things has been a competition. I've, I've always been in a competition with myself every day. And I don't care, you know, it, God puts Tom Brady in front of me and he's transferring to, to Boise State. I'm going to give him everything I got to make Tom, nice. Tom Brady better. But, you know, I'm yeah, not yeah, that's yeah. a crazy statement to say because it's Tom Brady. But, you know, at the same time, I don't, I don't care who's in front of me. I don't care what opponents are in front of me. I don't, I don't care. I know who, who I am and I know who, what I got to do to get better. Um, so that's it. And I'm going to make everybody else around me better you know, to, to win this job and and to you know, to do whatever is extra necessary, whatnot. What are those extras for you? More time where doing this? Like, how do you adjust your schedule to, to maybe even give it more than 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 most players are? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And, uh, 
you know, I talked to to Taylin, uh not too long. Me and him are like super you guys close. are cool. Yeah, yeah super yeah. close. I love Taylin, you know, and yeah. uh and and getting his perspective uh, perspective at a different place now with a different coach and how he goes about his things because I'm not gonna copy him, but I, I I like I talked to Spencer Rattler that was at South Carolina and, and Jordan oh, Kay yeah. and all those guys. So I, I talked to Spencer, then I talked to um you know CJ Stroud and you know all those other quarterbacks. And I really like to see what they do and then make it my own, you know, and, and I think uh, giving my secret sauce, I guess, is it's not really throwing the football on the field. You don't have to. I can throw like everybody can throw and Malachi can throw. Maddox can throw. Colt can full, throw. Max can mm -hmm. throw. Cutter can still throw like all these guys <laughs> can throw. Every Ashton can throw. So everybody can throw the football. That's not that's not what it is. It's 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 the fine details of, uh, between the game. You know, I try to get with our, our defensive coordinators, our, our, our corners. I, I try to talk to them. You know, I try to get in the film room, watch, just watch other quarterbacks, watch their po their pocket presence, watch all of that. And then and learn more about the game, talking to other quarterbacks. And, and it's all it's learning more about the game. It's never about throwing. And whoever's out here, obviously lot, listening to this right now, it's not about always throwing. It's about learning more about the game. Um, because you can learn so much about the game just listening to others. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm in that film room, film room all the time or I'm on the iPad and I'm just on Thundercloud or I'm on YouTube and I'm just watching film, just breaking it down, watching coverages, watching techniques and all that stuff, like I said uh, last uh, interview. So just stuff like that. You've been playing quarterback for a long time, and it's C.J. Tiller, Boise State quarterback, the first ever current Boise State football quarterback to join us right here in our studio. So history is made. <laughs> we absolutely love that. You've been playing quarterback, and natural part of quarterback is leadership. But you're a redshirt freshman here at Boise State with two snaps in one game and one bowl start. But yeah, when I watch you out there in spring camp, you're you're not only trying to get better as a football player, you're pushing leadership and you're pushing yourself to be a leader. You talk about being poised and confidence and being a leader and and taking this, even though despite your young age and your inexperience, why is leadership so important to you? Yeah, uh, I, I think you can't you can't lead a bunch of guys without leading yourself first. So I got to know that I, I can I can lead myself before I can go out there. And you know, if I'm missing a rep in the weight room or or, or lollygagging in the weight room, um, these, these guys aren't going to respect me. You know, I, we got guys that are married in the room with kids in the room. Um, you you got to they got to respect you. You know, they got a family to take care of now. So mm -hmm. you got to you got to put it in that perspective too. Like, these guys' lives depend on this football game. You know, the football itself so i, I got to go in there every day with the same attitude too you know like this is all i want in life is to play football and, and, and play it at the high level i know it's going to end one day but um with the leadership thing it's just i i got to be able to go out there and, and know that they can trust me when i'm on the field um and and that starts with myself like i said so once i can once they see it in me and, and i could tell that these guys are leaning on me and, and, and they expect more from me that's when i can get on them and, and 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 not just getting on them harsh and yelling at them it's it's a it's a real talk you know like me and trail talk all the time and that's a guy i really respect that's a guy that hustles to the football every play. Um, you know, when he talks to me or I talk to him, it, it's it's real talk, you know. And if we could talk to Ben Dooley or or any of the – or Cage Casey, like you guys with Alex Tubner, like all those guys mm -hmm. are, are just respectable guys. And there's a, a list I just can't think right now. But um, you, when, when you get feedback from those guys and guys that carry, you, you, that's where you know you're going in the right uh, step with your leadership. Um, so that, that's that's where I want to go with it and, and leading myself first so I can lead the other guys to be able to go play football. Um, Day, so how do you, how do you get along with coach Danielson and, and uh, what part of it was him getting this gig that maybe made CJ Tiller say, you know what, I, you have options to go. You probably could go to the portal and do all that stuff and run from some serious competition. But Spencer, you feels like it's close and you wanted to stay and play for him. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first, first of all, coach D obviously, as you guys know, um, is a, is a very big in, into God. And, and that's something that means, a lot to me mm -hmm. um somebody that can spiritually lead me into the right direction but also give me the tough love knowing that i, I can trust his word because this is a guy that that walks through christ every day um so uh, that's number one you don't see a lot of that in, in head coaches today um and that's just number one uh but number two is just the type of guy he is you know how he carries himself he, he won't say something he won't do you know and and that's all you can ask for from a grown man um, to a younger, younger man, I guess you could say for me, but, uh, you're a man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, you know, you guys look 24, so we're all in the same boat, <laughs> hey, CJ. <laughs> but, um, you know, just how he carries himself, you know, you, you got to respect coach D, um, and not just because he's your head coach, even if, you know, him being our defensive coordinator, when coach Avalos was here, you, you still got to respect him. He's just, he's an awesome guy, carries himself the right way. And, and he's awesome to be around. He's, he's funny. Actually, he's pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. Crohn's disease. Let's talk about this. A quick little, uh, you know, 180 here in our conversation, getting to know you a little bit better. This is a disease. It's not a fun disease. It's it's a scary disease, and it kept you away from football for 
at least three years, maybe four years. I can't remember the exact background. Wow. You figure it out now, you know, the abdominal pains, the fatigue, the weight loss, the malnutrition, everything that you have to juggle. That's, that's so against uh, uh, active, healthy student athlete lifestyle. So how do you juggle the both and, and kind of give us, uh, you know, give us an update on how you deal with this Crohn's disease and, and how comfortable you are you with it today? Yeah. Yeah. You know, day to day life, uh, well, you know, growing up when you had, when I got diagnosed with Crohn's is something called trial and error with what foods you like. And obviously that did not work when I, when Crohn's was the worst thing me because anything I ate was just flare up. So, you know, once Crohn's started uh, settling down and I got my 10 hour surgery, um, after that whole surgery, calmed down everything, I really had to see what foods I liked and, and what foods would sit well in my stomach. So I got a list of foods I can and can't eat. Um, but you know, I try to stay consistent. You know, my dad always used to meal prep for me, um, all the time. So I'm just like a big, he would never always make the same thing, but I'm just like a big chicken and rice guy. So you, are? I, you are? Yeah, okay. I just eat chicken and rice all the time or pasta, like I love, or mac and cheese, craft. Hell yeah. Oh, so, the yeah. Like the original right out of the box? Yes, right. Right. That's, yeah. The greatest that's, that's food the greatest. on the earth. It is the, the cheapest one. Throw yeah. a hot dog it, in there or something the too. I'm telling you. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's it's Sam, our, our nutritioner, and, and all those people, they they have our our nutrition and everything for me down to a T. Um, so I always get, you know, the special, the special delivery food, I guess. You're the special kid. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. yeah, Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, stuff like that, you know, they help me out a lot, you know, and then I, I take shots every week. Um, so I just actually just got off with the insurance company not too long ago, um, to get new medication, but, uh, yeah, so I got to stay up on that. You know, it's, it's a struggle sometimes I could tell you that, you know, I just, you look back at your life, you know, when, when people ask you these questions about Crohn's and you just like, what, like what I went through was just, it, it was very crazy. And I, I can't sum up in in an hour what I really went through, but it's just, there's a lot of stuff and a lot of struggles and a lot of very hard nights that, you know, I just, it was just very hard for me to do sometimes. So um, I'm just very blessed that I'm like just alive here today. Boise State quarterback CJ Tiller in the row paint studio here on Prater in the ball game. Um, you don't seem like a guy who goes home and plays video games for eight hours and then goes to bed. You just don't. Um, what are you good at? What do you want to pursue outside of football? Yeah, uh, I don't play video games. You're right. That's, that's a very good tell. analysis. <laughs> you know, I'll play Madden here and there because like you have to as a football player. I'm with but you. Um, other than that, you know, like hobbies I like to do, I just go outside and just, you know, pickleball or, or doing something, spike ball or just being outside, you know. Uh, but things I want to pursue after football. Um, you know, I hope football takes me as long as I can go. And obviously I want to go to the NFL. NFL so that's, and, that's yeah. obviously the main, the main focus is going to be the main focus right now. But other than that, um, I want to get into the same thing my dad's doing. Um, he has his own business and it's family home design. So if you guys, anybody wants something done with their Plug house, it. Hey, he's coming. Plug He'll it. come down here, him and his crew and we'll, we'll get it done. I'll be there too. So, uh, he, he's a custom home designer, uh, builds homes from the ground up or, wow. or resells, obviously, the realtor start, uh, side of it. And that's something I want to get into is real estate and all that stuff. But I don't see me having doing a future in that. Um, I see that as like a side gig for me. Um, but also, I want to be in somewhere in the sports, if it's coaching or if it's development of players. Um, that, that would be awesome. But again, like I said, the main thing is main thing. And I want to focus on football and take this as far as I can go. But those are something I, I, I'm pretty interested in. Nice. Did you start the spring game scrimmage the other day, and do you expect to start spring game in two weeks? Uh, yes and yes. Okay. Yeah. That's very. We were trying to figure that out the other day. So yeah. he did start, and at this point, the plan is for you to start, and then and then on August first, it's a three way competition, and it's one third, one third, and one third, and let's go right. Yeah. Right? Is that kind yeah. of how you see it? You yeah. Know? I'm. Yeah. Why do you like your chances in this thing? Uh, because I think I'm unique. I I don't, I, I just think there's nobody like me, and I feel like. Uh, with Cutter on my side, uh, and, and and Cutter uh, just being able to develop me as a quarterback, I I think I have a fair shot. You know, this is what I want. I want a competition. I want it to bleed out as long as it can. You know, and I and I'm gonna give it all I got. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep growing, and um, you know, make the best man win. But you know, I, I really like my odds right now. So. All right, that's why you listen to Idaho Sports Talk, guys like C.J. Tiller in this studio. C.J., you hit it out of the park like we thought you would. This is why we wanted you in this set in this setting. We had your boy Trell last <laughs> week. We got some other yeah. big names coming up too. Well done, C- well well done, CJ Tiller. You set the bar high. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Good luck in that spring game. Can't wait to see it. Yes, sir. Can't wait. Not all sports talk. Prayer in the ball game. From the Beacon Plumbing Traffic Studios. This is Ticket Traffic. Report sponsored by Western States Cat, where they now offer scheduled or emergency mobile.